I will ask uh, Adriana Allen from Habitat International Coalition to uh, offer us uh, some concluding words on, on today's session. Sure, surely. Thank you so much. Um, not a story to be concluded, <laughs> but let me try. The first thing to, I want to thank um, everyone, all the five groups so much. I knew uh, quite well the work of, well, uh, ACHR in Vietnam and, um, and, and Thailand, but I knew less about uh, the experiences of uh, Namibia, um, the experience of uh, Belo Horizonte, and also the experience in Bangladesh. So thank you so much uh, for sharing that. I guess that the first thing to say is to really highlight the importance of this conversation. I mean, this is not just a, a gathering where five uh, amazing groups are sharing five amazing experiences, but I feel, and I think that it's important to acknowledge that um, moments and processes and like these are in fact doing something extraordinarily important, which is to rewrite history, rewrite the history of how cities build. And in rewriting the history, they are also rewriting the future of how cities should and could be built. Um, so what I see here, what I, what I heard today are all extraordinary stories by ordinary people and uh, by the ordinary people that, again, build, run, maintain, repair, uh, you know, make cities what they are. Um, and I think that it's important to remind ourselves of why this is so important, why this is not just, these are not just uh, five, uh, you know, isolated experiences or with, you know, even network, but uh, uh, different experiences in which people have uh, taken uh, things in their own hands. Um, when we look at the situation where we are and we remind ourselves that right now, even if we listen to United Nations data, we are looking at scenario where today we have a one worldwide, a 1.8 billion deficit in terms of uh, access to adequate and affordable housing. In. But not only that, this is projected to increase to 3 billion, yeah, 3 billion uh, deficit people affected by this uh, lack of adequate uh, uh, access to adequate and affordable housing by 2030. So if we were to, we could add many more numbers, but what we can see is that in fact, in something as crucial as housing, everyone has said that housing is life, housing is not a roof, it's not four walls, it's life, supports all forms of life, supports health, education, uh, livelihoods, and so on. Uh, so if we think that this is a crisis somehow that is growing exponentially, we need to ask ourselves what are the key routes uh, uh, for that process. And I see at least three that these groups, you know, are uh, really tackling heads on. One is clearly the increasing still number of forced evictions, and we need to find alternative ways, you know, to, to challenge evictions, to to construct viable alternative ways. This is very important because particularly, I mean, we are in the week in which the COP26, the, you know, the, 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 the conference of the parties is uh, conferring right now around, you know, climate change and the need to adopt urgent solutions and so on. And we know that in many cases and increasingly, precisely climate change is becoming one of the reasons or arguments for evicting people. So this idea that, you know, in fact, people have to be moved to be protected from risk and so on is taking momentum. And if we look at the Philippines and many other contexts, you will see that, in fact, forced evictions are increasing dramatically, paradoxically, uh, you know, in the name of protecting people from risk. The second point that many of you highlighted as well as, as, as the context in which, you know, the work started have to do with the financialization of land and housing. So how do we stop, you know, the process by which housing can only be accessed as a commodity? And this is precisely what you are doing. You are undoing the whole notion of housing as a commodity and you are re remaking housing um, uh, as, as, as a common good, something, uh, housing as something that has primarily a social function that needs to be protected. And the third thing that we still um, find and we need to, to challenge and tackle has to do with the fact that when we look at social housing or public social housing, um, 
programs and policies and so on, they still massively do not work for the urban poor. Uh, and this is across the whole world. I am speaking from uh, London, but you know, I could be saying the same in any context. Um, so these three things are crucial. And I think that what these groups, what all the five groups are doing in rewriting uh, the history is very much uh, affecting a process of housing uh, justice. So this is really realizing housing justice uh, by, by practicing it. So I was trying to think in terms of final reflections, I know that I'm probably over time, so I'm going to be very quickly, but I was trying to think about what are some of the key ingredients or strategies that um, appear again and again uh, across the five presentations. And I'm going to go very quickly through them. Um, but just to remind ourselves, I think that one that uh, was very, very uh, present throughout was the importance of preserving and protecting uh, the community-led character of these processes. And in many cases, we heard, for instance, how important it is, in fact, to start from community-led uh, 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 data collection. And, and we know that this is not only important in terms of understanding what are the needs, you know, what are the housing needs, uh, whose housing needs are we talking about, but also what are the priorities and what are the aspirations. And I think that that cannot be, I mean, all of you highlighted that, but that it's really important to, to remember. A second key thing I thought that was very important that you all highlighted as well has to do with the importance of protecting the incrementality of these processes. I think that it was Muncho uh, just now that say, uh, um, housing is not, we have to approach housing not as a project, but as a process, or it was too highly, I think. Um, and this is extraordinarily important. How do we protect the incrementality of housing as a process, so that housing as a process can then cater for uh, the different cycles in which we go through life and so on. So this is, uh, again, extraordinarily important and something that all the initiatives really uh, um, protect, really preserve, really nurture. Um, a third thing I thought that was very, very important and, and, and needs more unpacking and discussion has to do with the mobilizing of finance. Yeah? When we look at other processes and particularly public uh, social housing, we find that usually this idea of, you know, like, like uh, sor sorting out, tackling the housing deficit costs money, uh, money that is not available and so on. And all these experiences show us a completely different way of thinking about housing financing, um, starting with much reduced costs that of course are central to the question of affordability, but also um, through the mobilization from the saving groups and similar forms of saving groups. So these seed yeah, seed forms of, you know, gathering, uh, uh, gathering uh, resources by finding also collaterals uh, that can then uh, work through revolving funds. So again, a lot to unpack around that. Um, a fourth question for me, I think that again was was very remarkable in many of the presentations, has to do with uh, rethinking the question of land tenure, secure land tenure. And again, here, I think that uh, social housing uh, programs uh, have a lot to learn because again, the picture in terms of social, uh, uh, sorry, uh, land and housing tenure is very black and white, no? Uh, do you own, do you rent, you know, and, and the, the, the possibilities or the options are much more reduced than the ones that we are seeing here. So we saw, uh, and reading again also through some of the examples, extraordinarily interesting examples that show us that in fact we have to work through a whole spectrum of uh, tenure security. Uh, it's not just about owning uh, your house. Uh, there are collective forms, there are, there, there are many, many more that apply not only to housing, but also to, uh, uh, to land. Um, a fifth one for me, very important one, was the, the, the reference to the importance of creating some forms of risk sharing mechanisms. So making 
the whole process, a collective one throughout. And I think that this is again something that we didn't discuss explicitly today, but I know that is very much a, a key element of all, uh, or, or at least most of the initiatives. And I think that the sixth one, and again, because of the, we are running out of time, uh, Pierre, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think that it has clearly to do with the building and sustaining durable partnerships uh, and networks. Um, and I think that in this one, uh, there were a couple of things, and I finish with this, uh, that have to do again with um, the value of nurturing process of reciprocal learning. I think that this was one of the, I mean, in HIC we talk about uh, the importance of thinking uh, about and working through pedagogies of change. This is something that we are very invested. And I think that all these uh, experiences are pedagogies of change in action. Uh, they are uh, not just producing different housing conditions. They are, as many of you highlighted, producing agency, producing autonomy, producing gender equality, and producing community, creating community. So I know that I'm over time, so I stop here, but may, many, many thanks uh, for sharing your learning. And thank you, Adriana, for, uh, for wrapping, wrapping up today's session so, so eloquently and, and so succinctly, even though you did go over time, <laughs> it's, it's hard, to, <laughs> hard to summarize uh, all, all of these uh, wonderful initiatives and, and endeavors, uh, but I think uh, you, you touched on, on all of the different elements and, and I think you know the the overall message is that you know community led housing is is you know is a solution is you know probably the best solution, uh, and we you know and and we're desperately in need of of better solutions and uh, and we see you know the uptake uh, in 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 all of you know in these in these five uh, communities we we see you know the hunger for. for for this solution, so um, and uh, and and I so I want to thank everyone for uh, for all of their work uh, in uh, you know you you could be you know for for the architects and and the, and the leaders you you could be you know you could be designing you know million dollar homes if you wanted to but you've chosen to work with communities to you know and and create uh, meaningful impact and uh, and that's you know that, that's very commendable and, and thank you for for your work and and for all the community leaders for taking the time away from your families and uh you know to be sharing your knowledge and your experience with with uh, the, you know with other communities with with other strangers is uh you know is is really wonderful and, and very inspiring so thank you uh from for everyone you know from bangladesh namibia thailand vietnam uh, and brazil and thank you to urbanment to pierre and nina and uh, luisa for coordinating this and making this happen and share this knowledge more widely through through social media and, and websites etc thank you have a great evening great day and uh, and we will we will meet again